Namaste and welcome to the third edition of the series that we are calling Swami Sampad. In the first part, we understood what Swami in the Swami Sampad means. That it's not about a role or a position, it is more about a mindset. In the second part, we understood these 51 excellences outlined can actually put, be put into four separate buckets. And we could remember this with the easy mnemonic called EAST. So E is for energy qualities, A is for attitude to learning, S is for skills and D is for traits. Now the first excellence which is outlined in the Swami Sampad is called Maha Kulino. And this would fall into the traits bucket. So Maha Kulino. Maha would mean big, mega, great and Kul would mean lineage. So Maha Kulino would mean that a person coming from a great lineage. The question over here which comes to all our minds is that would great lineage mean royal lineage? So that couldn't have been the case because you see the first protege of uh, Acharya Chanakya was Chandragupta Maurya and he was not known to have come from a royal lineage but he definitely came from a noble lineage. So what would noble lineage actually mean? Nobility does not come with just the name of a family, it comes for the action of the family. So noble lineage or noble background would mean belonging to a family uh, where the elders, where the family members or the family follow its goals and objectives and purusharth in life in the most righteous manner possible. So that is what we can call is noble lineage and uh, it is not even surprising because modern um, psychology now has proven it that early childhood experiences actually uh, create, define and develop the worldview that a person actually has. So it is so early on at that time Acharya realized what the importance of actually a family background is all about. Now having heard and understood that, it's important for us to understand as to what are the what is what is the meaning of this thing that Acharya has outlined, Mahakulino. So a good way to actually develop understanding is to probably reflect on a few questions that we will leave you with and you will derive your own meanings and understandings about how important this is. So the first is you can think about all examples that you can see in history and in the contemporary world of how backgrounds reflect on leadership styles. So you could think about leaders who you could think are Swamis. We could give you a few examples like JRD, Baba Amte. You could take anyone, any one of uh, whom you are inspired by and delve into their family backgrounds and see what is their early childhood experience which actually shaped them into the leaders that they became. But no learning is complete without some introspection. So another thing that you could actually reflect about is that how has my family impacted my personality? What are the positives which are working for me? And which are the limiting factors also? And how can I actually work and get over them? And the third is that if it's evidently my personal leadership style, my parenting style is actually impacting the younger people around, then it's very important for us to actually inspect and take a hard look at our own conduct and reflect on this that what are the life lessons that am I emanating and how will I build a Mahakul for the next generation? So these are some of the questions that we would leave you to reflect upon and you could then come around next Wednesday to listen about the next step and get on to the next part of the journey in discovering what it takes to become a great leader. Thank you so much and see you next Wednesday.